Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making over a few items and then adding them to um, an area in my store. Um, and we're going to start with this, what I call an urn. It's actually a silver plated piece and uh, I think what it was actually used for was, um, was to uh, keep drinks cold. Uh, but um, to me, I, just, I see an urn when I look at it. Uh, and we're going to start with this uh, Waverly paint in the color Agave. And I'm not sponsored, but uh, I do like this color. And it seems like it's covering really well in just one coat. Uh, now, I'm, I generally paint the bottoms of my objects, but for some reason, I want this to be obvious that it was a silver plated piece. So, uh, since I'm not going to be painting the inside, then I'm also not going to paint the underneath. But you could do either that you choose. Um, I kind of like the idea of uh, seeing some of that silver plate. Uh, but I'm just putting a good coat on it, um, on the entire piece. And then um, once I get this covered well and I let it dry, I think I, I'm able to do this in just one coat uh, and then just a little bit of touch up. And then once I let that dry, then I just take it outside and spray it with a clear coat. Now I use Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Clear Coat, uh, but you could use any clear coat that you want. And then once I let that dry, then uh, I'm going over it with some uh, white wax. And I get my white wax from Dixie Belle just because I uh, sell their products in my store. Now you could brush this on with a wax brush and then wipe it off with the cloth. But I'm just, because I haven't let this uh, paint dry really long, I'm just going to wipe it on so that I don't put too much pressure on it with the brush and lose some of my paint. You obviously could use a clear clear wax or a clear coat if you didn't want this milky white look. I just like how that white wax settles into the details. And, um, and then once you do that, you don't have to seal it because the white wax also acts as a sealer. So I didn't mention that I just, I did paint just down the inside of that, um, just where it shows and I had a good area to stop at where you couldn't see the line. And then we're going to move on to the next item and I don't even know what to say this is. I found it at an estate sale and my husband thought it would be really pretty white waxed. So um, I'm going to be uh, doing the, the same technique to this one and you have all kinds of little details in this piece to um, to, for the wax to settle in too. Um, and again, like I said, I don't really know what this is. Um, not real sure even what you would use it for, but I think it is really pretty as long as, um, it has a, uh, color on it. And I'm not real crazy about that. Um, the look of this, I guess it's brass. I don't think that it's real, but, um, but I just wasn't crazy about the color and I thought this would be a good uh, item to put the white wax on. Now I do think that this would make a really pretty planter. Um, and it has that cottage core feel to it, I think. And it's no fun to paint because there's so many crevices to get inside of, but as I've said before, uh, the harder it is to paint because of all those crevices, uh, the better that it will look once you put that white wax on it. So I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the urn or the ice bucket. And I'm going to uh, just put a good coat on this and, an, and a touch-up coat. And then once it dries, then I'm going to take it outside again and spray it with the, um, with the Rust-Oleum Matte Finish Clear Coat. Now with this piece, uh, I do go back and paint the underneath, and I'm not, I'm not going to show you that process, but once this top dries, I do go back and paint the underneath. So the same process on this one as uh, with the urn. Um, I'm just going to uh, take a, a brush with this one because there's so many uh, little crevices that uh, I wouldn't be able to get to if I just tried to use a rag. 
So I'm just taking the brush here and putting a good coat of this uh, wax on and then uh, just wiping it off. And again, at this point, you could just use another clear coat on it to protect it if you didn't want the look of the white wax settling into all the little crevices. Now, at this point, you can use any, um, any brand of wax that you want. Before I was introduced to Dixie Belle, uh, I was using the Jolie, J-O-L-E wax, uh, and I really liked it. Um, so just any clear or any white wax that you want. Uh, I do prefer the creamier uh, kind and, and not the liquidy, uh, just because with the liquid, it, it tends to take your paint off easier. And here is the finished product. And now I, ha I had thr thrifted this little caddy and um, I've taken it out and spray painted it with a matte black finished finish and uh, I covered this little wooden handle with, um, with some masking tape because I wanted to go back and put some antiquing wax on that which is what I'm doing here. This little caddy was kind of a brownish color, and uh, so I just felt like just a flat black would uh, would look a lot better on this. So I'm just using this same Dixie Belle uh, wax in the brown, and just putting a good coat with a brush on it, and then I'm gonna wipe that off. Uh, you could use just a regular stain here, but this is just a lot easier for me to use the waxes because there's not any odor and and uh, they're water soluble. So uh, it just works better for me. I very rarely use an oil stain anymore. And now if you haven't recognized these bottles, uh, these are the Starbucks iced coffee bottles. And I use them a lot because they look a lot like a little milk bottle. And... Um, so I'm just giving them two coats of the buttercream in Dixie Belle chalk paint, and then uh, and then I'll give them a, a clear coat. And by clear coat, just like the other, I just take them outside and spray them with uh, with the Rust-Oleum clear matte finish. And again, any sealer that you want to use on these, if you want to use a clear wax or any kind of uh, spray sealer, will work just fine. And now I'm just using a little stamp that I had, and this is one I've had for years, and so I'm sorry that I'm not gonna be able to uh, tell you what it is. Uh, there are a lot of botanical uh, stamps out there, so uh, just anything that, um, I just like the little plant on this because I'm gonna be putting blooms in it, uh, but I'm just using this same little stamp on each bottle. And I'm using a green ink uh, just because I, I thought that would look better. Now you can uh, clear coat this bottle before or after you put this stamp on. Um, it might even be better to do it afterwards. Uh, but um, if you do it before, then if you get a little bit of that ink on, it'll be easier to wipe off. And now I'm just taking a chalk marker he marker here because I want to be able to change what it says if I if I need to, and I'm just writing the word bloom. And I'm doing that because I'm going to put some greenery inside. And I feel like that really changes up the look of this little caddy and gives it a, a, a completely different look and purpose. And now I'm going to show you how to change up a thrifted um, wreath that has seen its better days. Now I was happy with the um, with the hydrangeas in this wreath, but these leaves uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of times when uh, fake greenery gets uh, the sunlight. After a while, it'll turn almost like a turquoise green, and then it's just very obvious that it's gotten some sun, sun damage. So I'm just cutting apart these little stems, and um, and then I'm just gonna stick them down in this. And because the, the base of this wreath is a grapevine, I'm not even gonna have to glue these in. I can just stick them back in there, 
and it'll hold really well. And then if you want to change it out, then you can change it out. Uh, but I think it's important when you're adding greenery to a wreath that you keep your floral going in one direction. And I like to stick some on the inside going toward the inside and some going toward the outside and just keep filling it in. Like I say, keep that in the same direction, uh, but just kind of keep your flowers flowing inward and then outward. And I, I think that gives it more of a natural look and um, and it'll be a lot easier to tell where you need another stem and like i said these aren't actually stems they're just pieces of stems so uh, i think i did this this whole wreath with just a couple of stems that i only paid like a dollar for now you could add other colors in here or other types of greenery i wanted to keep this one simple i just wanted it to be springy but the colors that I'm working with are um, are the blue with a little bit of green. So I didn't want to introduce another color here. And like I said, I just like the simple look of a greenery wreath. So since I already had the hydrangeas here, I just kept adding greenery until I felt like it was full enough. And that's all that I'm going to do to this wreath. So always when you're out, just buy these wreaths, even if they are not in good condition, the flowers, because you can just take those out and just add more. And it's just a very inexpensive way to do your, your wreaths without having to buy the forms, which can get pretty pricey. And then the last item that I'm going to be doing is this little, uh, it's the top of a little bird cage. I guess you would call it a cloche of sorts. But um, this is just a, a little Autumn Blessings picture that I got back in the fall at the Dollar Tree. And I sanded that glittery uh, stuff off the front. And now I'm just going to take this kudzu green from Dixie Belle and just kind of haphazardly paint it. I, I don't worry about full coverage here because I kind of like the darker uh, showing through. It just gives it more of an aged look. So I'm just kind of haphazardly painting both the inside and outside of this. And it didn't have a bottom, so I assume it's just a cloche. And so uh, that's what the little picture is about. I'm just going to make something, a little base for this to sit on. So I just paint that the same color of kudzu. And uh, because I don't really want it to stand out, I just want it to kind of, uh, just kind of blend uh, so that there is a base for it. And then uh, once I get this painted the same color, um, then just to give it some dimension, I add, uh, I just put a little bit of white on my brush and I just leave the green in the brush. I don't worry about cleaning my brush. I just add a little bit of white and a little bit of a yellow and just kind of uh, add some more dimension to this color. I do that on the top and sides of the base and then I also add some of those same colors into this cloche. And then you can just fill the cloche with whatever you think looks good. I, I just chose to do uh, uh, some Spanish moss and a little bird in it to keep it simple. And uh, now I'm just showing you how I work that into my vignette. Uh, I just try to, um, to keep my colors uh, distributed. Um, so that it kind of balances out. I, I didn't choose to do this on film today because it was just a little difficult in the store to do that today. Uh, but I'm just trying to show you where I balance these actually three colors because I have uh, the agave blue and the buttercream of the white and then, uh, and then just touches of green. So, um, Again, I just balance those colors out. I like to have uh, something uh, substantial on the mantle. It's just, I mean, you wouldn't have to do that at all. I just like to do that. And, um, and I don't like for things to be exactly the same on each side. And a lot of people do, and that's fine. But I just like to create some balance without making it too matchy-matchy. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
And I hope you have a great evening. God bless you and your family.